Hi, Lake County residents. My name is Hannah Gehring, and I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager for the Lake County Health Department in Lake County, Illinois. And I'm so glad that you could join us for today's edition of Top 10 Questions About COVID-19. This is our vaccine edition because we've been getting so many questions about COVID-19 vaccines from our residents. With me today, I have two guests. I have Jefferson McMillan Wilhoyt, who is our Director of Health Informatics and Technology at the Health Department. And I also have Dr. Sana Med, who you may recognize from previous videos. She is our medical epidemiologist and our medical advisor for our mass vaccination for COVID-19. Thanks guys for being with me today. Thanks for having us, Hannah. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, I'm really excited to get started. As I said, we've been getting so many questions from our residents. Um, so the biggest question that we are getting right now really focuses on the idea of when can I get it? Um, so I would like to ask you first, Sana, can you explain who can get the COVID-19 vaccine right now? Sure. So Hannah, right now we are prioritizing our healthcare personnel who work directly with our patients. Um, we're looking at healthcare personnel who work in hospitals, um, in long-term care facilities, um, in outpatient clinics, in home health care agencies, uh, within the public health care system, as well as our EMS or emergency medical services and pharmacies. Um, healthcare personnel are defined as people who work in these settings that are staff that include nursing or medical assistants, um, as well as support staff, like those who work in the food service or environmental areas and administrative services. Additionally, the populations also being prioritized are long-term care facility residents. And these are adults who reside in these facilities that are receiving a variety of services there, including medical and personnel uh, care. So the next question that we're getting is, who will be able to get the vaccine next? Also known as, but when do I get my shot? Sana? Thanks, Sana. So um, for individuals who will be up to get vaccinated next would be people who are over the age of 75, 75 years and older. Um, they would also include who we call frontline essential workers. These are individuals that work in certain sectors of society that are crucial to make, make sure that society continues to function. These would include first responders, teachers, support staff, uh, pu public trans transit employees, grocery store staff, and daycare workers. Um, it would also include um, staff in corrections, um, the U.S. Postal Service, people who work in food and agriculture and manufacturing. Following that group, once uh, all those individuals are offered the opportunity for vaccination, would then fall in the adults that are between the ages of 65 and 74 years old, and people who are between the ages of 16 to 64 that have medical conditions that put them at high risk for having severe disease, from COVID-19. Great, okay, thank you for clarifying that. I know a lot of people are trying to figure out where they fit um, in the progression of these things. Um, so then the last question kind of about the, the when is how long are these phases going to take? You know, that's a really good question. Um, and, you know, it'll depend on a lot of factors. Um, it'll depend on how many people are registered in our all vac system. Um, it'll depend on how much vaccine is available and how quickly we can get individuals vaccinated that are interested in getting vaccinated. Um, we anticipate that the first uh, phase, the healthcare personnel and the long-term care facility res residents will take several weeks um, into January, um, maybe even early February. Got it. Okay. So Great segue into this next section of questions um, about getting notified when it's time for your vaccine. So um, Sana queued this up really great. Jefferson, um, let's talk about all vax system in Lake County. How does someone register for all vax and what if they don't have a computer? No, that's a great question, Hannah. And we have designed the AllVac system to be um, as easy as it can be for our community members so that they can get notified of when their vaccine is going to be ready. So to register for the AllVac system, it's really easy. You just go to AllVax, A-L-L-V-A-X dot dot org, and you click the Get Started button. That'll take you into a screen that where you'll put in your first name and your last name. You also put in your date of birth, which will help us uh, 
put you into the right phase, as Sana mentioned earlier, for those who are either over 75 or over 65. Um, and then you'll receive an email that will guide you through resetting or setting a password for your account. We want to keep the system as secure as we can so that we protect your information in it. Once you're in the system, it'll ask you to register yourself and you'll be guided through several risk screening questions that will again help us put you in the right phase to get the vaccine when it is your time to get one. You can also set up uh, household members, those who are in your household or who you care for, by uh, using the same system and just guiding, being guided through those questions again. Now, what if you don't have a computer? What if you don't have an email? We still want you to register and we still need you to get into the AllVac system. So the easiest way to do that is to call the Lake County Health Department at 847-377-8130 and you're gonna select option one and that's our AllVax option. That'll get you to somebody here at the health department who can help you to register. In addition, we're also trying to work with uh, our community partners to engage them and enable them to help you register for the AllVac system. So stay tuned for more information on that. Great, thank you. Um, Sana, Jefferson mentioned something that we have been getting a lot of questions about. So in those screening questions in the AllVac system, um, why are some health conditions not listed in those questions? So, you know, that's a really good question because we're hearing that question as well on the communicable disease program um, and from concerned residents. And so I wanted to clarify a couple of things. That list that is in the AllVac system is based on the list from the CDC. Now, the CDC has studied uh, individuals with certain underlying conditions and has found that there are certain underlying conditions that predispose people to have a higher risk of getting really severe disease or even death. And those in conditions include um, being immunocompromised or what we call, a, you know, having a weakened immune system, either from bone marrow or blood um, or organ transplant, um, having HIV or being on medications that would weaken your immune system, um, you know, chronic kidney disease, lung, chronic lung disease, Down syndrome, heart conditions such as heart failure, um, obesity, pregnancy, smoking, type 2 diabetes, these have all been studied to show that they increase the risk of having severe COVID-19 disease once infected. There are other conditions that the CDC has said that may result in severe disease, but studies are ongoing. And for the purposes of vaccine distribution, um, we are focusing on the ones that have proven data to show that they have severe disease. But keep in mind that we are hoping to get everyone vaccinated. We are simply prioritizing the most vulnerable population and those frontline workers first. Great. Okay, so Jefferson, once someone is registered in the AllVax portal, um, how will they know when it's time to schedule? So you'll know when it's time to schedule because you'll get an email from the AllVac system. It'll tell you that you're eligible to schedule and that your phase has come up. Now, it's really important that everyone knows that this email is only gonna come out as we have vaccine supply. So if there's not a vaccine for you, you won't get this email yet. But as Sana mentioned, our goal is that everybody gets vaccinated. So we'll get, you'll get an email at some point as we get more vaccine in. Once you receive that email, you'll go back into the AllVac system and you'll be able to schedule your vaccine appointment uh, through that system. So what if someone gets their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine outside of Lake County? Well, the way that we've designed the AllVac system is that it actually talks to the state registry where your immune record, your immunization record is housed. So if you got your dose, your first dose somewhere else, all Vax will be able to know about that when you go in and you select that you're scheduling for your second dose. So if you get that email and you've already gotten your first dose, just go in, select that you're going to schedule for your second dose, and the system will pull down your information. This last set of questions is really what people are considering as they're, they're deciding if they're going to get vaccinated for COVID-19. So first, um, what brand of vaccine will I get or what brand will be available to me? And is there a preference as to which brand is best? So the brand that a person will receive when they come through Lake County Health Department will depend on our current availability at the time. 
So that's why it's really important that prior to coming to your appointment that you review the FDA's emergency use authorization fact sheet. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, talk to your healthcare provider prior to coming to your appointment. That fact sheet will be emailed to you when you are scheduling your appointment. What's really important to understand about both vaccines is that both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are mRNA vaccines. They both work the same way to boost your immunity against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. We're still learning about the different the two vaccines and how effective they are against the general pop for the or how effective they are for the general population. But based off the clinical trials that were done, both vaccines have similar safety and efficacy. So then if you get one shot of one of the vaccines, can you get your second shot with the other vaccine or do you need to get the same vaccine for both doses? So currently the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are not interchangeable with each other. So there hasn't been much study looking at if you were to get one dose of one vaccine and then a second dose with another brand. Um, and so what currently the CDC is recommending is that if you get uh, a vaccine with, let's say, Pfizer, the second dose should be Pfizer and vice versa. If you get the first dose with Moderna, the second dose should be a Moderna vaccine. OK, so another big question is, are these vaccines safe? So both of these vaccines have undergone uh, extensive large clinical trials to make sure that they've met safety standards. Both vaccines passed through three clinical trials that included months of data collection and thousands of participants. The uh, Pfizer trial had over 40,000 participants. The Moderna trial had over 30,000 participants. Routine safety standards remained in place throughout the entire study time that ensured that the vaccine then could be authorized by the FDA. The Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices is an independent committee of experts and physicians. They reviewed all of this data and felt it was safe to then be recommended to the uh, American population. And so that has then been recommended and now is being utilized in among all the health departments. So then with these clinical trials that were done, um, are there side effects that were recognized during those trials that, that we should know about? Sure. So there are some common side effects um, that have been recognized by both vaccines. They include pain at the injection site, swelling, fever, swelling at the injection site, fever, chills, tiredness, and headache. Usually these symptoms resolve between one to three days after getting vaccinated. Very rarely will a person have an immediate allergic reaction like uh, hives or swelling of the face or throat um, or anaphylaxis. But um, there are uh, currently, the CDC is looking really carefully into that, and they have put up um, individuals that maybe should not be vaccinated because they are at a higher risk of getting anaphylaxis. Okay, so that leads to my last question, question which is, should people that have certain allergies get the vaccine? Great, so that this is a really good question and a pretty common question that we get um, that come in, comes in through our phone line. So for people who have a history of food allergies to like things like peanuts, let's say, or other food out foods, um, pets, uh, insects, venom, environmental allergies, you can get the vaccine. And even for those who have a history of having allergies to oral medications like oral antibiotics, or non-serious allergies um, to other vaccines or, you know, injectable medications like IV medications, they can get the vaccine too. The ones that we are a little concerned about and that we watch very closely are individuals that have had severe allergic reactions to other vaccines or injectable medications like IV medications. Severe allergic reactions are defined as, you know, hives, tongue swelling, face swelling, um, and anaphylaxis. So if individuals have these particular symptoms to other vaccines that are not COVID vaccines or IV medications, it's recommended that you speak to your healthcare provider and weigh the benefits and harm. Um, these individuals can still get the vaccine if the benefit outweighs the harm. So definitely talk to your healthcare provider. And then lastly, the individuals that should not get this vaccine are 
people who have had severe allergic reaction to any of the ingredients in the COVID vaccine or have had an allergic reaction to a previous dose of the COVID vaccine or have had an immediate allergic reaction to that COVID vaccine. So what does that mean? That means that if anyone has had, after getting the COVID vaccine, um, you know, throat swelling, face swelling, has had hives show up, um, has got, had anaphylaxis, those people should not get a second dose of COVID vaccine. Or once reviewing the ingredients on the FDA emergency authorization sheet, you find that you are allergic to any of those ingredients or even something called polysorbate, those are people that should not get this vaccine. Okay, great. That concludes our top 10 questions for now. Um, I'd like to just remind everyone that we have our email address. Um, if you have general questions about COVID-19, you can always email my team at COVID-19 at lakecountyil.gov. And if you have questions or need support for all VAX for registering for that system, um, you can reach out to our all VAX support team. And that is just all VAX, A-L-L-V-A-X at lakecountyil.gov. They'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please send us your questions and uh, everyone stay healthy, stay safe. And when it's your turn to get the vaccine, we hope that you'll get it. Thanks.